everybody. Happy Friday again and welcome back. Let's start math. I don't do PowerPoints on math. I write on the board a lot. <clears throat> We have five freshmen. And so I'm going to give you some packets that will help you remember the drugs that we talked about today <clears throat> before we start math. <laughs> okay, um, Chloe. E. Poirier. No, because I'm stapling it. <laughs> you thought you're special, like, oh, she writes her, our names. No, because I copied this one here. Okay, um, this one, and I'm trying to, like, say your name. <laughs> uh, Leslie, and notice I never miss names. Dianara. Cheyenne, do you have this? I gave it to you at night. And Cheyenne. Okay. What I'd like you to do, the ones who have it already, you can do it too. <clears throat> Remember the suffixes that I mentioned today? The most commonly used roots, prefixes, and suffixes by the FDA is in that four page packet or handout. Okay. I'd like you to have that so that it's easy for you to remember this top 200 drugs. Now I mentioned some most commonly used suffixes like zosid. What else today? <clears throat> what else? My, there's something before that too late food. Mind? Okay, start finding them in that right. packet. Yeah, semide. Right. Get the sim there. Zosin, I mentioned Zosin today. What else? Phloxacin. <clears throat> Phloxacin or oxacin, that's your fluoroquinolone or your quinolone. You see how that is helpful? <clears throat> Before we start math. <clears throat> Do that for a few minutes because you're going to receive more handouts. You see Zoe's binder? There are handouts that you will be using the entire nine months. <clears throat> and you're going to refer to it over and over. That's why you're the only ones I gave those because they already have had theirs on their first sequence. <clears throat> I like them now, so it sticks, right? <clears throat> what else? Common suffix today, this morning. Thiazide. And then you're going to remember my first sequence was the renal. So all the diseases that affect the renal or urinary or excretory system. After the renal is going to be endocrine. <clears throat> and that's also the sequence. Okay, moving on to start with math. This one, you want to put it in your binder too. Though we said the first thing she bought after day one was... For two binders. That one in pass. Freshmen only, they have that. Unless, oh, Michelle, I don't think you have that one. <clears throat> the sheet that you're passing around says pharmacy math sheet. I don't want to call it cheat sheet. I don't want cheating in my class. You'll be terminated automatically. Cheat. Okay, so. I put there not cheat sheet, but pharmacy math sheet. These are the most common conversions that we will be using every time we do math. What else do we have to memorize it? No, I hate the word memorize. <clears throat> you have to remember them, but really, really, it's just like driving. You don't have to memorize how to drive because we're going to be using it every day and doing in class work and doing homework. It's kind of like passively 
remembering it more than actively, right? Okay, don't embarrass me. One teaspoon is? Oh. An ounce is? 30 milliliters. Um, what's the formula? <clears throat> Right. An inch, Zoe, is? Uh, 2.5. Yes. An inch is 2.5 centimeters. A kilogram, Antonio, is? Don't embarrass me. 2.2 pounds. There you go. 2.2 pounds. <clears throat> Brian. Ask Brian, Sam. <clears throat> Conversion. <clears throat> What's one liter? What's one liter? <laughs> Any conversion, she didn't say specific. Good job. You see that? Did you have to actively memorize that? No. Right? Because we do a lot of worksheets practice and then you do a homework and you really don't have to actively memorize but you have to know it by the time we do our first quiz on conversions that's the first handout that i'd like you to have <laughs> the second one <clears throat> has some more conversions in the front and then the back is important for <clears throat> i'm sorry flow rate and drip rate which is sequence three and pediatric dosing, which is sequence four. So, freshman, stand up and get one. I have your names. <laughs> Do you need more? Welcome. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. So those two are conversions. <clears throat> you want to know them. Today, I think, based on my estimate, because I have a meeting, we're only going to do two topics, two easy topics, just to smooth in the freshmen. And these topics are time conversion and temperature conversion. Okay. Did you do time conversion in career prep? Yes. Did you do temperature conversion in curve prep? Let's start off with time. <clears throat> Every time I discuss a topic, I tell you why you need to study this, because it's not just studying it for fun or whatever nonsense. You need it in practice. So when do we use time in the practice of medicine and pharmacy? You remember, Sam? Hilda? Brian? <clears throat> when to take the medication is one. Another thing or that time of administration of the medication, though we don't administer the medication, it's usually the nurses and the doctors, okay? We need to know time. Another application of time conversion. <clears throat> in your personal life or in your practice. Lights, right? Or in a 24 hour format, usually, okay? Another one, your shift, if you work in a hospital, you usually is in a 24-hour form, especially if you work in a military setting or installation. Is that clear? Okay. Now let's talk about time. Others will say, oh, it's just plus 12 and minus 12, right? <clears throat> it's that easy. Okay. So time, we go from standard <clears throat> to military or military to standard. Another term for military. Very good. International. Okay. What format is standard? Mm. Whatever we use, right? So it can be three digit with a colon and with an AM or a PM, or it can be four digit, okay, with an AM or a PM. That's our standard time, okay? Military and international would be what format? Four digits. 24 hour format. Four digits, always four digits, okay? So you'll have to have a zero in the front, okay? And add a zero. No colon, no AM or PM, okay? What's the current time, Zoe? <clears throat> it's like 
How do I write that? 10 colon 55 a.m. Antonio, convert this to international or military time. <clears throat> 10.55. No colon, no a.m., no p.m. Is that clear? Okay. A couple of things I'd like you to remember. <clears throat> What's midnight, Brian? Well, what? 12 a.m. Midnight is the beginning of the day. So how do we write that in international time? Huh? Can I do it? Can you do it? Yeah. You pour it. Is it all zeros? All zeros. Yes. It's the beginning of the day, midnight. Okay. So what happens if I say, call me one minute after the beginning of the day? That's too long to say, right? How do you write that in standard time? Standard first. Oh. Well, O one. Yeah. Okay, so how do you write that in military? Zero, 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 one. So midnight can be four zeros or 2,400. It is the beginning or the end of the day. But after the first minute, you cannot do 2,401 because there's only 24 hours in the day. Is that clear? Guys, I'll meet you for lunch at noon. Don't ask what time. What's noon? So, <laughs> 12 p.m. Okay, how do I write this in military or international time? 12 zero zero. It's 12th hour of the day. Yes, that's why I discussed this because it's, it can be confusing to some. Midnight is the beginning of the day, so it's zero 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 or 2400, the end of the day. Well, p.m. is lunchtime, noon. That's the 12th hour of the day, so it's 1,200. Is that clear? She's still observing it. No, uh, it's not after 24. I, you just said that. Yeah, so that's I, why I said it ends here. You can't do 2401. No, I was going to say, like, I'm stupid in my head. <laughs> I can see your face. You know, the class is based on your facial expression, how fast I go or not. It's based on your facial expression. Anyway, so plus 12 minus 12, how we're doing? I learned one thing from one of my veteran students. And since I taught it to class, I've seen it in test papers. So I asked him, I said, Jim, why do you always have a clock? drawn on your test paper. And he said, it's because Miss L, it's so easy for me to convert if I have the clock. I look inside, it's AM. I look outside, it's PM. And since then, Every time I tell this story, I see more and more students draw clocks on their test papers. Who does this now? See? Okay, now let's do some in-class work. <clears throat> Every time we do math, there's going to be, this is the least topics we're gonna go over too. Usually it's an average of three to four topics, okay? three to four topics. But today, since this is your first lesson with me, it's just going to be one topic. After I do my board work and explain to you the, that topic and why it's used in pharmacy or in medicine, you do an in-class work. I wait, I call you one by one, no miss, no skip, okay? And then I give you a homework, every topic, okay? 99% of the time I give a homework for every topic. Okay, what does the homework do? The next time we see each other, which means whatever I give you today as a homework should be turned in when? Monday, at what time? Or eight where? In the black basket. Is that clear? Any, anybody who submits it at 8.01 is late gets a 10% deduction, okay? There will be a homework every time. In class, do you have to turn it in? No, 
It's for you, it's for your review, the build up leading towards final exam, okay? You want it, Paris? <laughs> we'll do some in class work. <clears throat> Ugh, my lozenge. Do we have enough? I mean, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There should be one extra. I'm <clears throat> not very good with this one. Then. Only two topics I have the meeting. So I'll just miss you 10 minutes early. Thank <clears throat> <clears throat> you. Yeah. Freshman. Mm -hmm. Don't get intimidated by the students who've been with me a while, okay? They've been working on their accuracy, so now they're working on their speed, okay? When you see them, like, and turn in the homework fast, don't worry, okay? You can turn it in until Monday. But some are really fast now that they turn it in the same day, okay? They did the lesson. Requirement, calculator. I'm not allowing anybody to use their phones as a calculator. You're lucky I allow you to use a calculator. Back in pharmacy school, we're not allowed to use the calculator until we got to calculus. Okay. If you haven't bought your calculator yet <clears throat> and you're looking at one, make sure it has the square root functionality. Because you need it for sequence for square root like this. <clears throat> you need it for body surface area calculation. Okay. I don't care where your calculator came from. It can be from the dollar store. You guys have something going on this weekend for Easter? Some some of your church activities. I miss that time when my son was little. It's been two, three years now that he doesn't want to do this bunny thing. Easter bunny, Easter egg hunt. <laughs> I still go and watch the little kids. <laughs> I go by myself. <laughs> I'll pass around the homework, but freshmen don't prioritize the homework, prioritize the in class because I'm going to call you one by one for in class. <laughs> Tim, hold up. Brian, do it on the other side. Homework. Homework. Pass it on your side, this one on their side. <clears throat> one more topic after this, temperature conversion. <laughs> <laughs> Freshmen, make sure you watch the video since this is your math, first math. I see who's watching them and who's not, huh? <clears throat> After time and temperature, what's next? Hilda, you remember? What are the next topics so they can watch the videos? Before that. Mm -hmm. 
for that. <clears throat> Roman numeral. So listen up, freshmen. Next videos that you want to watch. Roman numerals and conversion of height, inches to centimeters, centimeters to inches, and conversion of weight. Kilograms to pounds, pounds to kilograms. Mm -hmm. In classes for you, homework is to be turned in. Ready? Not yet? Freshman done? Leslie, <laughs> put your backpack down. <laughs> oh, you're cold. <laughs> What's your comfort? Like a binky? Oh, oh it's a binky. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody, <clears throat> what did I say? In classes for you, so that you can review them at the end of the day or before bedtime. Homework is to be turned in. I only check for submission. <clears throat> One fourteen twenty one. Two twenty one p.m. That's my first one. Okay, because yeah. I have options for in the class. I'm just verifying which one before I call you one by. <clears throat> Staff, remember our meeting on Monday or Tuesday? Monday. The sooner the better. Jay will be here on Monday. So those who have their license applications ready. You can turn them in on Monday. Okay. She gathers it for me. I do the final stamp and signature. Okay. It's me. <clears throat> Ready? Who's still working? In class. Freshman Don? Yes? Yes? Uh, is that a nod? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> oh, Cheyenne needs a few. <clears throat> That's why I only do two topics because we got freshmen. Don't turn in the in class. Only homework is to be turned in. So if you're fast, you can turn it in now. Yes. I'm only waiting on in class. Let's start. 1421. Let's start at the back. Dianara. No, that's 2 a.m. It's 221 a.m. If you do 0221. So oh, since 14, 1421 is international or military. So where are you going to convert it to? Standard, which means I should see a colon, an AM, or a PM as your conversion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it? Okay, now I'll recommend you doing this. Okay? Because the plus 12, minus 12, 12 isn't working out. So, 
What is 1421? You look where 14 is. Where's 14? 221 p.m. There you go. 221 p.m. So I was going to do standard. So I put 02 and then I put 21 instead of. Does that make sense? Yes. So that's what started off with this one. Yeah, and then I ended up with military. The format for standard is always three or four digits with a colon and an AM or a PM. Military doesn't have colon. Okay. So the correct answer is two colon 21 and then PM or 221 PM. Okay. Cheyenne, 2023 would be? 823 AM. Yeah. After the 12th hour is going to be afternoon, right? So, yeah, so, so you're at 20 already, okay? So it's 8, 23 what? PM, 8 colon and then 23 and then a PM. Freshman, huh? Go back to this one or watch the video again when you get home. Leslie, 1345 would be? Correct, 145 PM. Do not forget your colon after the one and then the PM. 0539, Chloe. 5, 39 a.m. Good job. 539 a.m. E. Poirier, 0900 would be? 9 a.m. Correct. Number six, Sam. 2012 would be? A12 p.m. Correct. Number seven, Hilda, 2304 would be? 1104 p.m. Michelle, 0558 would be? 5.58 a.m. Good job. 21, 20. Is it 21 on yours? 21, 28. Okay. Zoe, 21, 28 would be? 9, 28 p.m. Because you're past the 12th hour mark. So it's going to be a p.m. 11, 10. Antonio would be? 11, 10 a.m. 11, colon, 10, and then an a.m. Brian, 2,400. 12 a.m. Another way to write... 12 a.m. is four zeros, okay? 2.23 p.m., you again would be? 14. Correct, 13. Antonio, 5.56 p.m. would be? 17. Correct, no colon, no a.m., no p.m. Zoe, 8.01 a.m. would be? 08. 0801, it has to be four digits because it's military or international time. 15, back to you, Michelle. <clears throat> 1027. 1027, no colon, no AM or PM. Hilda, 1249 PM would be? 1249. 17, Sam, 1050 AM would be? 1050, back to you. Dianara, 458, I'm sorry, 454 p.m. would be? There you go, 1654. You redeemed yourself. Number 19, Cheyenne, 617 a.m. would be? 06. Yay! 0617. Number 20, back to you, Leslie. Good job. Okay. Remember, I told you commit all the mistakes here, okay? This is the room for committing mistakes, not outside, okay? Because outside, we can damage somebody. No, time is not really a big deal. But if you administer at an a.m. when it's supposed to be p.m., that might be a problem and vice versa, okay? Any questions on time conversion? Because I'm moving on. Moving on to temperature conversion. <laughs> Lord, give me my voice even up to 12 p.m. only. <laughs> 12 p.m. would be 12, 0, 0. Okay, temperature, you did temperature conversion conversion for your path? Yes. Did you do fraction or decimal? Both. Okay, good job. So temperature, why do we need to study temperature conversion in the practice of pharmacy or medicine? You remember, Brian? Why do we need to study the conversion of temperature in the practice of pharmacy or medicine. Storage for the medications. Your medication will have to be stored at the correct temperature. Sometimes it's refrigerator, sometimes it's room temperature, sometimes it's controlled room temperature, okay? So storage condition. And fun fact, everywhere else in the world uses Celsius except for the United States, okay? 
So if we import drugs, their storage conditions back in the day will be in Celsius and we need to convert. Now, it'll say the Celsius and the Fahrenheit as well. One of your jobs as pharmacy technician is to check the refrigerator temperature per shift. Because refrigerator carries or where we store drugs that need to be refrigerated. And we want to make sure that the temperature, the storage condition is correct. When an inventory of drugs come in and you see there's ice packs in there, what do you think you should think? What do you think you should think? <clears throat> what do you think is a common... That it what should come to mind? It, that it needs to be refrigerated or frozen, probably, right? When it came with ice packs or it's in a cooler, right? So here are the storage conditions. Do they come up on the PTCE? Yes. What are their favorite questions when it comes to storage condition? Drugs that must be refrigerated. So on your book, or you can look it up, what are the drugs that are, that are seen in the refrigerator? Is one of the questions that usually show up. So they'll ask, at what storage condition should Zalatan be in? Okay. Zalatin is an eye drops for glaucoma, but it must be refrigerated. So what's refrigerator temperature based on the packet that I gave you? Two to eight degrees Celsius. And you know how they're going to ask you on the board exam? They're not going to ask you to, to, they're not going to give you an option of two to eight Celsius. Instead, they're going to give you an option of all Fahrenheit. So if you know the refrigerator temperature is between two to eight Celsius, you can convert it to Fahrenheit and choose that answer that converts two to eight Celsius into Fahrenheit. You see how they're not direct sometimes on the question? That's how they get to. Because it's not only a test of your knowledge on pharmacy, it's a test of comprehension. Because we got to understand your patient. patients. Okay? So <clears throat> let's talk about temperature. Celsius to Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit to Celsius. How do we spell Celsius? Another term for Celsius. Very good. Centigrade. How do you spell Fahrenheit? <laughs> <laughs> No. I very high. The sensing. Oh, ooh, it does centigrade, not great, huh? So Celsius is the same as centigrade, and Fahrenheit is spelled this way with an H. Okay. It was a perfume brand back in the day. I keep telling you, like old perfume brand. It's like a burgundy color with a gold cap called Fahrenheit. It's very strong. So if, you're, um, if your parents are about my age, they know this perfume brand. Anyway, everywhere else in the world uses Celsius, except for the United States. We use Fahrenheit. Back in the day, UK used Celsius. Then they transitioned to Fahrenheit. And then they said, no, we're going back to Celsius. Okay, so if you're an immigrant like me, when I remember back in the day when I moved here, if I want to know how the temperature is like, I got to convert it to Celsius so I know how it feels like from my country. <laughs> but it's a cold, right? So even now when I talk to France, I'll tell them the temperature in Fahrenheit and they'll ask me, how much is that <laughs> in Celsius? like practical application. So anyway, Celsius to Fahrenheit, what's our formula? Oh, I don't memorize formulas. You'll just show them what I write on the board. Gilda likes this one. What's the lines? Oh.
I like writing this one. That's it. Why? Even if I close my eyes, right? That's the only thing I remember. And why is that? F minus 32 over 1.8. Right? So it's F minus 32. So if the variable here is F, that means this is a formula for Celsius. Okay. Now, do you agree that if I have a formula for one, I can derive a formula for the other? Yes. Okay. Why is it 1.8? Because I know it's 9 over 5. Try dividing 9 by 5. It's 1.8. So I used to. Okay. So F minus 32 over 1.8 is your formula for Celsius. Okay. I want to know the formula for Fahrenheit. I don't know, but I'll derive it. No problem. And how do I do that? It will be 1.8, remember, times C equals... F minus 32. What am I trying to get? Fahrenheit, right? So what am, what am I gonna do with the minus 32? I'll transfer it over the bridge, which means it's 1.8 Celsius, or you can do 1.8 C. What happens when you transfer it on the other side? Plus 32. So your formula for Fahrenheit is that. Did I memorize any formula? No. I remembered one, two, three, four lines. Why is the F on the right side? Okay. <laughs> it's the same. But you have to remember, when using formulas, we always follow the rule PEMDAS. So, you want to make sure that you press equals You do before you do the plus 32. You want to make sure that you press equals here after you subtract 32 before you divide it by 1.8. What's PEMDAS? In order of priority. Okay. So if you don't press equals here, it's going to multiply it first or divide it first. Is that clear? Okay, and don't blame your calculator. Story time. I had a student back in the day. I said, I don't care where you get your calculator. You can get it from the dollar store. Okay, I said, but maybe if you get it from the dollar store, get two. Fun fact, no, it's 98 cents at Walmart. Okay, so I say get two because what if the other one runs out of battery? Okay, you gotta back up, okay? And then, she kept getting her answers wrong and she blamed her calculator because she got it from the dollars. So every time she'd fail a test or math, she'd say, because I got my calculator from the dollar store. When I said during orientation, I don't care to get it from the dollar store. Okay. User error or equipment error? User error, okay? I don't want that to be your error, okay? Don't blame your calculator. So it's a simple plugging in the numbers, okay? There are three temperatures I'd like you to remember. First one, what's the normal body temperature? Uh, I hear different answers. I heard a 98.6. Technically, the normal body temperature is, the, is based on the person's body temperature. Okay, but for math purposes, and as a general rule, normal body temperature is 98.6. That's in Fahrenheit. Let's try to convert this in Celsius. So I know. So it's just a matter of plugging it in, right? I'm running out of. 98.6, so this will be 98.6 minus 32 equals divided by 1.8, and the answer is 37. 37 degrees Celsius. 
Those are three temperatures I'm going to talk about, and I want you to remember them by heart without needing a calculator. Okay, I remember this because back in the day, the thermometer is a mercury in a glass. Okay, and they have it in red square, 37. So I know that the normal body temperature is 37 Celsius, and if you go past that, you're running a fever. Okay, now um, we do the digital thermometer here. Okay. So 98.6 is 37 Celsius, okay? What's the freezing point of water? Michelle said 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's convert that. Who knows the freezing in, cel in Celsius? Zero. Zero. Let's double check. 32 minus 32 is? Zero. Anything divided by anything will be zero. So, correct? Correct. Last one, what's the boiling point of water? Okay. Somebody said 212 Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? 100. Okay, there's three temperatures. Let's try to plug in the numbers. Let's plug in the Celsius. 1.8 times 100. 1.8 times 100 is? Plus 32 is? What's the answer? 212. No, another one. Is that clear? You just plug it in the formula. Okay. Any questions? We'll do some in class work. Get one in class. Don't get used to your worksheets that have F or C already. If your test, if the test paper or the test that you got doesn't have an F or a C, I want to see the degree symbol in the F or the C or I'll mark you wrong. Make it a habit to put the unit at all times. If it's kilograms, put kg. If it's ml, put ml, okay? Because if it's just number, I'll mark you wrong, okay? Unless there's a C or an F just like that one. This is the last topic for the day. Which one did you get, the 19 Celsius? Yes. Okay. When you're done with in-class, come up and get one homework. Extras. Thank you. Uh. Oh. Yeah. What's the one when you round off right? Okay. For temperature, my instruction is keep one decimal place or the tenth place. Okay. Who doesn't know how to round off numbers? <laughs> I'm going to throw my purse at you all the way to the back. You know, I'm a mom, right? So I have a good target. <laughs> good aim. Remember, PEMDAS. Don't blame your calculators. Who doesn't have a calculator? Okay. When you come back on Monday, you should have one. Okay. That's part of your core. If you don't have a calculator, you're going to have to do longhand paper. And pan. Okay, for cells for temperature conversion, one keep one decimal place or the tenth place. Follow the rule of rounding off, meaning you look on the second one. If it's five and up, you add one.
That's my verbal order. If the test says keep up to two decimal places or hundreds, follow the instruction on the test. Remember, my verbal orders are just as important as the written orders. You forgot to say this last time. I'll give homeworks that are verbal order every now and then. And it's a simple question and you have to turn it in the next day. Okay? Because our job receives both verbal and written orders. Prescriptions can be verbal too, over the phone. Again, freshmen, watch the videos. Three next to three topics on Monday will be Roman numerals, centimeters to inches, inches to centimeters, pounds to kilograms, kilograms to pounds. This is your math foundation, pharmacy math foundation, conversions. Every sequence we will do conversions. So that every time there's a new student, you get to keep up. Verbal order, keep one decimal place or the 10th place for temperature conversion. Because there's no instruction on your paper. This is the last topic, so I'll dismiss you early. <clears throat> it's pharmacology and math again on Monday, but it's going to be Miss Shay. I'll be in the sidelines. <clears throat> this kind of on the by picture. I don't remember the um I don't think I was taught how to do the Crack of the what is it called? And you? Yeah, I never did that. Thumb to thumb away from you. Okay, I also saw anything on top of it, like to cut it. Alcohol pad. Oh, remember? No, I didn't, you pass I didn't, it? I didn't, because we didn't get to, we didn't have an ambulance at the time, like new one. So, I don't know. Remember, you wipe the neck of the ampule with an alcohol pad. pad. Once you're done wiping, you got to make sure there's no drug on the Head of on, on the yeah. top part, so you flick that right. Yeah. Actually, you flick that first, so the drug goes inside the ampule, and then the alcohol prep pad you twist your ampule so that you're kind of sanitizing the neck part of the ampule, and then on the side, thumb to thumb away from, you. and then you toss the alcohol prep pad with the head of the ampule in the sharps container. I'll work with you. Um, Tomorrow. I mean, Monday when this show teaches, I'll work with it. So, this is this sequence that she does now? Yeah, but it might be. The first three weeks is not content. Yeah. It's, it's pharmacology and medicine. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? No. Five <laughs> more minutes.
Wash your shoes or change them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wash shoes tomorrow. Or oh, start breaking them in. Yeah, that's why. One week break in. Because you don't want to wear new shoes at your side. You're going to be on your feet eight to ten hours a day. You want to you want to get the most comfortable shoes you can afford. What would you recommend? Um, there's brands I like specifically and what pharmacists like as well in the forums. One is the on brand, O N Adidas on. Yeah, on. I like my Sorel, S O R E L. Yeah. And I have an Air Max that's very comfortable too, but it depends. The on always come up in all forums as one of the most comfortable on brand. Oh, it's a little bit pricey, like a hundred plus, but you're walking in clouds. <laughs> I still have, I still do have it, but I don't wear it as much like the Adidas clouds there. Yeah, if you can find a white, yeah. <clears throat> Class. Her, she should be sitting next to your mentees, especially during math, huh? Just in case they need help or clarification on this. <laughs> if you're done, homeworks are already here. Up front, just get one. Again, make it a habit. Do not forget to turn in homeworks. First thing. <laughs> I'd like to remind you which is a rule in pharmacy. Okay. Drop the trailing zero. Do not forget the leading zero. Listen, freshmen. What does that mean? If your final answer is a hundred, do not do 100.0. Drop the trailing zero. If your answer is 0.17, do not do 0.17. Put 0 0.17. Do not forget the leading zero. Why? If you do this, our brain is not programmed to, programmed to look for a decimal point after a whole number. This can be misread as a thousand. If you do 0.17, okay, our brain is not programmed to look for a decimal point before a whole number. But if you put a zero <clears throat> before it, it tells you, hey, I'm a decimal. Hey, I'm less than one. Is that clear? This is a pharmacy rule, okay? It will apply on the PTCB as well, okay? Drop the trailing zero. Do not forget the leading zero. Is that clear? Okay. In all numbers, final answers that you're going to use. This is more scary once we get to ML. MG, right? Because this can be misread as 1,000 milligrams <clears throat> instead of 100. This can be misread as 17 milligrams instead of 0.17 if, it's, if it doesn't have the zero, okay? So what's going to happen? It may cause overdose or underdose. Overdose, underdose is just as bad as overdose, especially when we're talking about antibiotics. Okay. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
<coughs> Ready? Not yet. <coughs> Get one copy of homework so you don't forget. You haven't yet. Get one copy of homework if you haven't yet. Tell this time you got one. Not yet. Freshmen, don't forget, get one copy of homework, so you don't forget. So how many homeworks are due on Monday? Yeah. <clears throat> Hopefully on Monday, this is cleared out. <clears throat> Freshmen, all references are at your fingertips. They're on Blackboard. Okay. Be ahead of me. Always. Be ahead of me. Always. Two topics ahead of me, at least. One day will be three topics. <clears throat> <clears throat> I was looking for you yesterday, Yolda. I was just like, oh, she only comes Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I said, cool, we've got I saw your status got flipped already at 6 a.m. this morning. I saw the notification return from Elmo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we got eight minutes, so I'm going to go over answers now. Number one, 19 Celsius, Cheyenne. Good job. Number two, four Celsius, Dianara. Good job. Number three, Chloe, 102.8 Fahrenheit would be? Good job. Number four, 100 Fahrenheit, Leslie. Good job, 29, 21 Celsius, Eporie. Good, number six, Hilda. <clears throat> 39 degrees Celsius, number seven, Brian. Yes. Yeah, I don't wanna see a 39.0, a 37.0. I just mentioned to you the rules, okay? Number eight, 30 Celsius, Antonio. Good job. Number nine, Zoe. <clears throat> oh, 30. Good job. Number 10, Michelle. 69.8 Fahrenheit. Good job. 11, back to you, Hilda. Good job. Number 12, Epor Gay. 84. Mm -mm. No. I'll get back to you. So you might have flip flopped the formula. Number 13, Leslie. I have. Okay, I'll get back to you. Number 14, Chloe. Still working. Still working. 15, Dianara. Good job. Number 16, Cheyenne. Good job. 17, Brian. <clears throat> Good job. Number 18, Antonio. Good job. So I'm waiting on what numbers? What number do you have, Leslie? Uh, 13. 13. 14 for Chloe, right? And then Eporie. <clears throat> did you figure out what you did yeah. wrong? Okay. Okay. So 101.9 Fahrenheit is 38.8 Celsius. Ready, Leslie? Uh, Thirty-seven point seven degrees. Good job. And number fourteen, Chloe. It's okay. Fourteen Celsius to Fahrenheit.
Ready? Yeah, 57.2. Good job. 57.2 what? Oh, good job. Okay, good job, freshmen. Freshmen <clears throat> and everybody else. This is the first time you've seen me do lectures. How is it for you? Just be honest. I'm overwhelmed. I don't understand. Oh, can you slow down or whatever it is, okay? How do you like both the pharmacology and the math lectures today? Let's start off with Cheyenne. <laughs> How do you like or any comments about it? I mean, I was pretty good at this. I was a little overwhelmed. Personally. Yeah. And that's a common. Zoe, weren't you overwhelmed day one? I lectured. <laughs> yeah. Antonio, weren't you overwhelmed day one? I lectured. You, still, you hear that? I still am. <clears throat> Hilda, weren't you overwhelmed the first time I lectured? Sam, were you? Yes. Okay. Brian, were you overwhelmed the first time I lectured? Yes. Do you hear Antonio? Still am. Because it's always a new lesson. Okay. Dianetta, how is it for you for the first lecture, quote unquote, lecture day? It was okay. I'm just not used to being called on. Oh, get used to it. <laughs> That's an everyday thing. I want to hear your voices. Okay. You see how tiring it is for me for hours nonstop. Mm. Okay. Um, Leslie, how about you? How's it for you? First lecture day. Um, I was good. I like the pharmacology. I just feel like the math. I mean, I got it. It's just that yeah, here we're not as fast as the. Oh, yeah. And that's fine. They weren't as fast as they are now. So, right now, what's your concern? Accuracy. And another way for you to keep up is watch the videos before I lesson, I lecture on them. Okay. Chloe, how's it for you? It's good. You're eloquent in teaching. So, oh! But it's just that I'm overwhelmed. And also... Because this is not your lingo. Remember, three languages all at the same time. And my memory is bad. Don't say that. It's going to sharpen. That's why I'm repetitive. Okay? Even at home, I'm repetitive. Mom, you already told me that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got used to school. Right? What about you, Ipoye? How is it for your first lecture day? Okay, next on Monday, remind me, I have a little heater here. I can just run it here. Okay, and it helps. But you have to speak up. Okay. One thing I don't like is you not communicating. Because oh, we already talked about the air already. You guys, <laughs> and... But remind me. I thought I was very verbal. Okay, so let me tell you <laughs> this. No, let me tell you this. I'm hot flashing all the time. And yeah. so you have to remind me to turn on the heater. How is it for you, Michelle? Especially you're moving from hybrid to on ground. I like on ground. You like on ground a lot better? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no one's that, I mean, it can be overwhelming. So don't think that you're the only one who feels that. Everybody. Oh, you're overwhelmed too? No, no, no. That's uh, no. I kind of enjoy that you're really active as a class. I'm not very. Old. You're very active. Well, you're kind of like Mr. Jackson without the yelling. <laughs> I'm always yelling because I don't have a microphone. You know, I had a professor who walks who walks in with a karaoke mic, like because slowly. Yeah, like a deeper voice. Just you know, it feels like it's yelling. Back in our old campus, we got the second biggest classroom. And I told you, I walk around. This is like, I'm so pissed because this is our, our area right now. I don't do 6,000 steps anymore since we moved here. I did 6,000 steps on the average every day at that campus. I walk around. I sit next to you. I tap you. <laughs> Those things. Because I don't want anybody falling asleep. Okay. Um, Zoe and Antonia, I want to hear from you. Um, especially to those who are overwhelmed. I want you to give them an assurance that it's going to be okay and that it gets better. <clears throat> like go back to the time when you were a freshman because now you're a sophomore. It's pretty fresh. <clears throat> um, what did you do to calm your nerves or to not get overwhelmed or let the overwhelm win? Watching the videos really helps because like, it's just like an extra refresher and it gives you like... And like I suggest doing the 
even though you've done the, oh, the classroom again, I saved you the problems again because it, it gives you it you get faster, which I was not that fast when you get to but speed is not your goal right now, accuracy is okay. So it's okay. But we're under time limit too. So if you want to keep up, then watch the videos. That's a good one. Antonio. Antonio said, I'm in, I'm a sophomore, I'm still overwhelmed. So how do you swim every day? <laughs> Yeah. Right now, you don't have your textbooks yet. So, what do you have? Videos. Okay. <laughs> Go. Okay. Any questions? I will see you on Monday. I'll be in the sidelines. This day will be covering on Monday. Have a good one. Happy Friday and happy Easter. Have a good one. You too.